First question is from Ryan McClellan, 0724. What is the best way to get a higher vertical jump? Jump shoes. Next one, Doug. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you guys remember, remember those? those. Yeah. I, bro, I owned them. Did you? Oh, yeah. I Me and my them. brother did, too. Oh, uh, yeah. we and my buddy we and tried I. tried them out. They, so these, I mean, were, these were shoes that essentially had a block under the, the front part of the foot. So it's like you're, you're doing calf raises, right? Yeah. Walking around doing calf they raises. Were, they were a, a phenomenon for about 10 years. I mean, everybody bought into them for, I want to say, about 10 years. What did you do? Put them on and just walk around? No, okay. So, yeah. You, well, no, no. They had a, a program that went with it. Like, uh, you were supposed to do sprints and little, like, hops, and you were supposed to train in them. And, oh, my God, did you get, like, unbelievably sore, oh, right? Destroy oh, your And ass. so that's what that's what made you think, like, these things it are working. It has to be working, yeah. So, uh, it, when my uh, when I was, uh, uh, let's see here, Santa Teresa. So, when I was managing Santa Teresa, so I'm, I'm probably at this point 26 or so um and i i mean i bought those shoes back when i was 15 so i would say from 15 to then i had a trainer that was going to san jose state and was a kinese major and he took he got me into the the department in there and we did like some uh body fat with the bod pod thing that they had there and mm -hmm. i got to meet like the professor and he uh he actually did a thesis on the jump shoes and completely debunked them. Mm. But it wasn't until like a decade after they had already like sold millions and millions of these things and everybody was sold on the idea that they worked. They absolutely yeah. do not they work. They had their run for sure. Oh, they did. Well, that was back then we thought that, that calves played such a huge role. They play a role, yeah. but they're not. Yeah. Oh, there's much more happening than just having strong yeah. calves. I mean, I would I would argue they almost. I mean, if, if you broke down the mechanics of a jump, I know there's somebody who's like, oh, yes, they do play a role. Yeah. It's oh, like, no. no, you. I mean, they play such a small role if you honestly the uh the time and effort spent on the calf to help the vertical if that exact same time is spent on your quads and 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 move the movement you'll get way more bang it, for that's, your buck. so that's okay so here's a big one a lot of people don't realize that jumping is, uh, there's a lot of technique involved oh, it's, yeah. it's a skill so it's not just about power or or explosivity although those are important yeah it's I also a skill and in fact when you look at people who can jump really high you start to notice a, a common pattern and technique. So it's not just about power, strength, or explosivity, although those do play a role. I would argue, especially watching a lot of the PJ performance videos and all these, like technique is is so much of a higher priority than I even realized. Besides getting your legs strong and and you know making sure your whole body moves and has a lot of control and can be explosive on command. Um, to be able to get the right step and to really have like you know an even bigger step to get to, to maximize that stretch reflex uh, to get you to catapult up like all these things matter all the little nuances matter uh, you know the way that you approach the hoop if you're trying to dunk and, and all these types of things so uh, you know I think that they just do a masterful job at uh, you know coaching people and teaching all these techniques hands down best information online is, is that and I, I so I found Paul, uh, I want to say, you know, five years ago when we were first getting into this and I was just getting on Instagram and because I like basketball sports, like he came up in my feed <clears throat> and back then I think he had maybe, maybe 10,000 followers or so. And, you know, right away, whenever I see coaches or trainers, I, I go through their feed to kind of see like what kind of content and, and information producing. And like right away was like this dude knows his shit and I have not found anybody else that's <clears throat> putting out this good of information and really there, there's this uh, this misconception of uh, because trainers that are working with professional athletes they must be like the, the best or the smartest because they're working with professional athletes but a lot of times in the, in the pro world it's all about who you know. Yeah, it's and a they network. Just, yeah, it's just a network of the right the right person. You know the right person to get in. And, doing, and, and a lot of times, uh, they're kind of average trainers. They're not that great, the information they're presenting. And I knew this. As, as, as my experience went on and my education grew in, in the space, Like I started to become aware more and more of this. Like, oh, wow, like this, that's not great to be training that trainer mm -hmm. that. Or I'd meet like a professional athlete, and he'd tell me the routine his trainer had to do. I'm like, what the hell is this? But when I met, saw Paul, I was like, this dude knows his stuff. When we were talking, uh, one of the things I asked him actually, to your point, Justin, was I was like, how much does technique make a difference in compared to like, you know, building your squat up? Because obviously learning to squat really well, the power to your point, Sal, does play a big role. But technique is such a big role. He's like, a lot of times, Adam, he goes, I can take somebody in the, in the same day, add three to six inches to their vertical. 
Mm-hmm. That's just insane. Yeah, that is insane. That's the difference of a person dunking a basketball and not being able to dunk. Mm-hmm. That's like somebody who could barely touch the rim and yeah. all of a sudden leaves that day and can dunk a basketball. That's mind blowing. And he's all just by picking apart their technique, the way mm-hmm. they they lead into the jump, the way they set into it. They go, and that's this is why it's it's weird for us sometimes when we look at some of these guys that have these these crazy verticals. They don't have the biggest calves all the time. They don't always have massive quads to, to get them up there. It's not it's not always that. Some of them are. Just they have the technique down. It's so a skill. Well. It's like saying you know how to get how to get a harder punch. You could definitely get stronger, yeah, point. but yeah. learning how to punch better is going to be it's more a very effective. Good example. So skill is number one. So number one, focus on the skill and technique of jumping high, and then number two, build up overall strength. Squats being one of the best exercises. And here's where I would actually recommend a quarter squat or a half squat. This is where you know that's the range of motion that you really want to get stronger at to improve your vertical. Full squats are great. They're not going to actually contribute as much as a half squat or quarter squat. But if you're a beginner and you don't have good general strength, then I would go full squat. If you're already working out, if you already got good full squats, you just want to do an exercise that's more specific to a vertical, try some half squats. Well, and squats. and this is what uh, there was a lot of controversy. I think a year or two ago oh, when, with LeBron. James yeah, when LeBron squats. James squat went viral, and we I must have been tagged a hundred times mm-hmm. on that. Um, and everybody like, look at how t- look at this pro athlete. He's terrible. It's actually. This is where it applies. Yeah. LeBron James doesn't give a shit if his quads are two inches bigger than the next guy. LeBron James isn't caring about you know having great hip health when he's 60 years old. All he gives a shit about is, can I improve my vertical? Where do I generate the most force that's you know going to be applicable to my sport? Right. You know, and that's that you know, and that's where the quarter squat kind of comes in. Like that's where you want to be able to have like the maximal amount of force to deal with, so I can transfer that to my feet to then catapult me up towards the rim. So I've I've announced this on my uh, Instagram stories many times. So if you haven't uh, heard me plug these guys, you absolutely should. If you're interested in in basketball vertical jump and and training uh, and even like technique and moves like uh, PJF performance. Uh, our buddy Paul Fabritz is, I think, the best in the industry. Uh, Max Marzo, who's a good friend and partner of Max his, also is awesome. Uh, and then um, Corey, Corey, what's what's Corey's page? Yeah, what is it? Uh, Sless uh, strength or yeah, yeah Schlesinger strength, yeah. Schlesinger strength, and all three of them. All, they all know each other. They come from a, a, a similar circle uh, of people that I think are are. Those leading. are all my favorite strength conditioning coaches out there for sports. Yeah, they're in leading, general. They're leading the way for sure. 